Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This question is related to hydrostatic force on submerged plane surfaces. So here we have a rigid gate. It's hinge at O and rests against a rigid support at B. And the width of the gate is given by 3 meter. And we can neglect the weight and the thickness of the gate as well as the hinge as well as the frictions in the hinge and the back of the gate is exposed to atmosphere so if you look at the diagram here this is the gate and the distance between the hinge and the water surface is given by 3 meter in the height of the gate, this part of the gate is 4 meter from O to A and then from A to B is 2 meter. So we asked to determine the magnitudes of the hydrostatic force acting on surface OA of the gates on this surface. The magnitudes of the hydrostatic force acting on BA which is the bottom part of the gate and then the lines of actions of the force of both on both surfaces in A and in B and then after that we asked to determine the force P that is needed to shut the gate close so meaning that uh, what force do we have to apply here in order to make sure that no water will be leaked between the gates between the gates and this this part here so the first part of the questions is determining the the hydrostatic force acting on surface OE here so in order to do this the first things that we need to do is uh, if we were to project the surface here if you view from this side here we will have a rectangular shape with the width of the gate is given by 3 meter and the height here is 4 meter so the first things that we need to determine in order to find the hydrostatic force here is where is the center of gravity of this plate here and the area of this here is E so it is symmetrical so we know that center of gravity will be in the middle so this will be our COG and then after knowing that now we can determine our h bar so h bar which in this particular case since the gate is vertical which is e also equal to y bar and the force hydrostatic force will be acting slightly below let's call that force the f1 the hydrostatic force so it will be acting to the center of pressure cop and the distance between here and here is our YCP. So that should give us the the force on surface OA. Now, if we also consider the force on surface AB, so here the pressure will be uniform, and it will be equal to rho g multiplied by h so if we call this h so the pressure here will be uniform and because it's uniform it will be acting in the middle the average force will be acting in the middle this
So the first part that we ask to determine is the hydrostatic force on surface OA. So we can use the formula for the hydrostatic force directly since both sides are open to atmosphere. So the hydrostatic component for so the, the hydrostatic uh, force due to atmospheric pressure component will be zero. So F1 here formula is that rho T H bar where H bar is the distance from the centroid to the water surface the vertical distance multiplied by A. So here our H bar is actually equal to 3 plus this is halfway through so 2. And A is the area of the plane so it's 3 multiplied by 4 so 12 meter squared so we can calculate f1 directly and that is equal to rho is 10 to the 3 9.81 and h bar is 5 area is 12 so that gives us the value of 588.6 kilonewton. Second part of the question is, is calculating the force F2 here. So in order to do that, F2 is just equal to rho g h, where h is the distance from here to here. That will give us the pressure here. And then multiply by the area of this plate here. So we know that H is equal to 3 plus 4. So that's 7 meter and the area will be this length here which is 2. Again multiply by the width which goes into the paper. So it's 3, so it's 6 meter squared and that will allow us to calculate F2 by substituting the value so F2 is equal to density is 10 to the 3 gravity 9.81 H is 7 area is 6 so that allow us to calculate that directly so 4.2.0 kilonewton okay then we ask to find the line of actions. So we need to get R1 actually. We need to get R1 first of all. So in order to get R1, R1 is actually equal to the distance from here to here which is 2 and plus YCP. So we need to determine YCP first of all. So by using the formula YCP is just IXX over H bar A. So here IXX is, is the formula for IXX for a rectangle is the the width multiplied by height cube divided by 12. So that is give us 3 multiplied by 4 cubed divided by 12 so 3 by 4 12 so that will cancel with the bottom so that will just give us 4 squared so that's 16 and substituting the value so this gives us 16 divided by h bar is 5 and then multiplied by area is 12 so YCP is equal to 0 0.2667 meter. Then our R1, our R1 will be equal to 2 plus 
YCP so 0 0.2667 so that is 0 that is 2.2667 meter then R2 what about R2 R2 So the clockwise movement will be the one two to P. So P will be acting here. So if you take movement about here, it will be clockwise of so P multiplied by this arm um, radius. So we have uh, if we take moment, take moment. About O, so we have P multiplied by the arm um, radius, which is just four, and it must be equal to anti-clockwise movement. So anti-clockwise movement, one one of it is due to F one, so it will be F one multiplied by the arm um, radius, so F one R one. plus if you take f2 f2 will also give anti-clockwise movement so f2 is acting here the arm radius is r2 so f2 multiplied by r2 so that would allow us to calculate p so p will be equal to f1 which is 588.6 kilonewton everything in terms of kilo multiplied by r1 we have calculated just now 2.2667 plus f2 is 412 kilonewton multiplied by 1 we divide that by 4 and that conveniently give us the value of 436.6 kilonewton